Perfect. So thank you, Beatrice, for joining us in these meetings. And first of all, uh, Beatrice is a, a background artist who worked for several studios. And we're going to see some of her beautiful work. And my, <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining. My first question uh, would be just to um, talk about a little bit about how you discovered that art was your passion and when you decided this was going to be your profession. Okay. So um, that's the easiest question because um, as a kid, I always used to, I think most artists all, always used to paint and draw and everywhere, walls, couches, paper, you name it. And uh, it was something that I always was praised about. So I always, I always was incentivized to keep going, to keep drawing, not on walls, but um, in general. And I don't know, it was just where I found that I had um, the best time. No maths, no, no science, just art. And so, and I was addicted to cartoons. Like I was in love with uh, anything Tex Avery and Chuck, Chuck Jones. And I don't know, that love eventually met my passion for drawing and I discovered animation and thought maybe I could do a career out of this and here we are. Wow, amazing. So what was your course of studies? Um, in uni? Well, I mean, also before, um, if you had, you, I know, you know, took some maybe courses in high school about art, drawing in general, or if you just started drawing after that? Um, so back home in Portugal, we, in ninth grade, we have to choose um, an area of studies. Okay. So either humanities, science, arts, sport, and uh, I went to arts. And so from 10th, 11th and 12th grade, I had um, art specific classes besides the normal, you know, Portuguese and, ma and normal maths and sports and stuff. I had specific art and drawing uh, classes. But um, yeah, in, univer in university, I chose to do a course in cinema because it had cinema and animation, but animation was very, very small part of it, which was a very big disappointment. Um, so I decided to stick with it and uh, graduate in, in, in cinema. And it was great because it gave me a lot of, you know, um, culture about the, the, the film industry and editing and production and stuff like that, it, a little bit of everything, um, but it, it still was an animation. Then I um, did a master's in computer animation, but that was specialized in 3D and it wasn't a very good course. So when I uh, finished my master's, I thought that I didn't have a good enough portfolio and I was looking around to uh, on the internet, searching for courses and workshops and then a friend of mine had just finished his year in IDEA and I asked him about it and he he was so, he raved about it. He was so happy he did it and his portfolio was so much more well-rounded. And uh, and I decided, yeah, I should do that. And so after a year of graduate of finishing my master's, I decided to enroll in IDEA. So at the time you had a uh, master level one or it was just one course? It was master level one. Okay, yeah. so you just did uh, one year, master level one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I, amazing. <laughs> I wish I'd done more. I honestly do. But because I already had a master's and a, a, a degree, it was, you know, now looking back, 26 isn't that old. But at the time, I was like, oof, I really should start, you know. Okay, I am 26 now, taking <laughs> notes of this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, you feel the pressure and then you get older and you look back and it's like, no, I had time. I could have done it. Yeah, uh, you feel old at 26. That's true. <laughs> it's like, yeah, time for study has passed. Now I have to do something. But it's it's not really the truth. Actually, you can study a lot more. <laughs> Absolutely. Which I did because when I got here, um, when I got back home, I didn't get a job in animation immediately and I needed to make money somehow. So I just got odd jobs um, just doing the starving artist cliche of waiting <laughs> tables and working at a hostel. 
while trying to work on my personal um, on my portfolio, my personal projects, which didn't I didn't have a lot of time for. But I decided to do like one of those um, mentor mentorships. Like, okay. This really uh, the, this artist that I loved, she she published on Instagram that she was doing a mentor mentorship for anyone who wanted to join, and I and I thought why not. It's 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 um, remote because she's Californian, and I'm Portuguese, and um, and I thought, well, it's not a lot of time, but it's still long, and it'll give me personal feedback on specifically um, environment art and background design, and yeah, so I did six weeks of that, which gave me a few more like big pieces to put in my portfolio, and that's actually. Uh, a, a big reason of so that this idea gave me the basics and great knowledge of visual development in general and then this uh, little workshop this little mentorship gave me a few more pieces to add to my portfolio that helped me that helped it boost it wow amazing so it was a one uh, one to one mentorship or there was maybe a small group of other it, people it, it, both. So whenever she she was giving her talks, it was a bunch of us on on Skype, on Zoom or whatever it was. But when it came to feedback, it was one on one. OK, so you also, you know, got the chance to do a bit of networking with the other artists. That's sure. also great. Yeah. yeah. OK, Life so happened. <laughs> what happened after that? So you started applying maybe or you I don't know, you got a call from I some I never stopped applying. That that was my thing. I just I, I thought uh, it's, uh, rejection is part of it. I'm just gonna you know send um, my CV all the time. And when I added that, so when I had the works the mentorship, COVID struck. Okay, perfect. So everything, <laughs> yeah, everything closed. Everything turned remote, and I think that helped me. A lot because you know when people are hiring they want to hire someone that's already living there or has no no issues with visas and not that I ha would have issues with visas but it's a lot easier to hire someone who's already there and doesn't need help with all that um, but COVID just enabled me to work from home and so when I continued in my process of sending CVs one of them just came back hi do you want to do a test like yeah and so that was successful and awesome and gave me my first you know foot in the door in perfect what was the first studio that answered uh the, well actually the first studios that answered i didn't get the job but the one that i did get the job okay. at was titmouse beautiful a big start <laughs> It was it was quite a big start. They're the same ones that do um, Big Mouth, for example. And I was working on Star Trek Lower Decks, which was great because it was, you know, a big title, a known franchise, even though no one knows about Star Trek Lower Decks. Everyone knows Star Trek. And it was great. Yeah. To have it on my on my CV is unbelievable. Because of course. Yeah. And maybe uh, you can tell us a little bit what were, you know, um, your duties on this job. What what were you doing for the studio? So this this was an entry level position, which means that uh, without experience, I could anyone can join. And so what they what I what I did was I was part of the paint team. So the backgrounds came from layout. Everything was already drawn on. And all I had to do was uh, paint it and texture it and it was a little bit like paint by numbers because um you know we have the we'd have the the key background and we'd we'd have to match the angles that we got to it so it was just color picking drop color picking drop it's it's simple but you know it's still work and good for practicing uh color because you know it's not easy color is not easy no not at all mm -hmm. and you know uh, I, I feel like the more you study it and the more you learn that it's so complex. I don't know if you felt the same. A hundred percent. Every time I learned something, I was like, this is just getting harder because now I, I can't um, just do anything. I really have to think about it. And the more I think yes. about it, the critical, the more critical I am and the harder it gets. And so. 
but then it gets easier again and then you study more and then it gets harder again it's just always like that i agree with you so much <laughs> so so much yeah. and so how long have you been uh, doing this uh, having this position for Teeth mouse and what happened after that because i've seen you uh, you work for different studios yeah so um Teeth mouse uh, i'm I'm always working as a, as a freelancer nowadays because you know remote and all that. Um, so Titmouse, when the second when the second season, my season ended, um, my contract was up, and so I needed to find some somewhere else to work. Um, they actually told me they were gonna um, they were probably gonna get me back for th for the third season, and they did contact me, but I was already signed up for Ardman, um, so I couldn't join them for the third season in the beginning. Uh, so yeah, I when the project finished in like May, I had maybe a month and a half of job searching. Ardman contacted me and I tested for the, I didn't even test for Ardman. That was that was wild. But I interviewed for them and um I started in August. And so I had those little two months to of vacation, which a month and a half was just stressing trying to find another gig. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but and yeah, I started Ardman and um and now uh, Titmouse contact me, contacted me to ask if I had, uh, if I wanted to help them out with the last few episodes. And I told them as long as I could do it part time, sure. And so now I have two jobs, one main, one full time and another uh, part time. But it's, yeah, it's awesome. I really love what I do. <laughs> I think we all do. But yeah, it doesn't feel like work a lot, a lot of the oh time. How how do you manage, you know, having two jobs and also uh, you have some, um, you know, time zone difference working for Teeth Mouse. I, I don't know if how, how this works, actually. <laughs> so, uh, they were aware of my time difference because it's eight hours from Toronto yeah. and uh, Vancouver, actually. And so um, eight hours is a lot. But because I wake up earlier than them, I start my day earlier. So that that's... Um, usually when I start working and then I have a meeting with them at night when I was working full time for them I I'd have a meeting at night my 6 p.m because they they okay. they usually had the meeting at like eight but I asked them to get a little earlier so I could have you know at least a free night so I I have a meeting with them get the reviews get the notes and then at seven I would log off they okay. they weren't very um particular about my time as long as, as the work was done they were fine with it and the work was done so yeah now with Ardman it's the same time zone because it's England so I wake up at nine they wake up at nine uh, uh, I start working at nine they start working at nine and we finish at six just a normal job that's perfect wow you you, you must have a lot of energy to do all all of this I I really I I like to be <laughs> I'm very special in this way. I like to be complimented. <laughs> I like to be praised. So that 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 fuels me. That gives me fire to do like a good job and surprise people. Like, oh my gosh, you're you're doing so well. You're working so much. I'm like, ha, ha yes, I got a nap. But yes, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so, um, what is your position at Artman Animation? What you're doing for them? Still background painting or design? I don't know. So um, now it's uh, it's a different title. It's a little bit different what I do. Still in the same vein, but it's um, I'm a two D matte painter. So okay. I, it's it's a little bit more um, com complex. So it's not as much as paint by numbers. Now I get the color keys, and with the color keys, I um, basically do what I feel is right with that i can play with textures i can play with brush strokes i just still have to fit within layout because the animation goes on top of that but um yeah it's a little bit more creatively challenging which i like more yeah. painterly more freedom oh, absolutely more painterly yeah so you get some assets cool. and you get the layout and the color key as style guide and then you you know you have the freedom to to express yourself following these guidelines exactly wow. it's not completely free but yeah it's a lot it's a lot freer than than before i don't mind either but i do prefer prefer what i have now <laughs> yeah of course it's you know like growing one step after another yeah 
And about this, um, where do you see yourself in the future, like future positions? If you see yourself in the future, in you know, if you have some plans or some dreams. Well, when I'm dreaming, I always, I, I my goal is to become an art director, but yeah. that's, you know, that implies that I get a lot better, uh, a lot um, more, uh, do a lot more studies, work a lot for myself, work in probably more studios just to get that, you know, um, experience. But yeah, I would love to, to be the, the director, the one that chooses how, how, how the look is going to be, you know, the one that has the final say, not, not about power, but about really about creating is, you know, I want to point at something and I was like, that's mine. And it, it isn't just mine because I did it. It's mine because I, decided it was going to be like that so it's my baby I don't know I don't I don't know how to explain but so yeah art director would be my my dream position and I'm working towards that no I totally understand I I'm always looking at these positions of course I'm really far away from that but uh, production designer art director uh, these are the people that really decide the look of a movie or of a tv series or, or a video game of course and that should be amazing, challenging, but amazing. <laughs> yeah. So you've mm. always been working uh, remote and... Uh, I did work... In, in, now, yes, I'm always working remote, but when I finished college, I had an internship and then I worked in uh, a different movie and uh, that was all in-house, but it was all Portuguese and very very niche very specific it was okay. independent short films yeah that was fun so uh, how do you feel about that what do you prefer what are the you know pros and cons of being remote or in house in in your opinion okay so I, and not a lot of people uh, a lot so i'm really in that half that enjoys working remote because um it's just the freedom to you know, if I want to take a, a break for coffee, I can just do it. I don't have to ask or feel judged because it's my third one or whatever. Um, I can work. I can wake up and just go directly, you know, in my pajamas to the computer and start my day like that. That starts slowly instead of waking up an hour earlier to get ready and then go to a place, face the cold. I don't know. It's just I, I, I'm I'm a little bit lazy like that. But the one thing that I do miss about working in a studio is um, the people, because you know animation is usually so nice. People are so cool and uh, so friendly. And yeah, that's the the thing I miss. Me and my mates now, my workmates, we actually have like Zoom calls, just the um, just the team without the bosses, so we can talk about crap, whatever we want. <laughs> Just to feel the connection, because sometimes, yeah, you're you're like eight hours alone-ish in your room or in your office, just working, 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 and th these these little social interactions help. Yeah, so just trying to recreate maybe that kind of feeling of being, you know, next yeah. to one another. Also, some past guests uh, told us about these kind of meetings they hold um, during the pandemic, of course, mm -hmm. uh, to to get in touch with their colleagues yeah just yeah get that this feeling of being together which is beautiful but also staying at home has its perks of course mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i totally get you i feel we're really similar <laughs> yeah well it's i think it's part of being an artist we're a little bit like that a little bit of of hermits but though oh another thing that's really that would be important of working in a studio is um you learn a lot more when you see people working yeah like when you see when you're you know maybe you want to stretch your legs so you walk around and you see everybody's work and you see how they how they do and learn like little tricks little hockeys that they programmed and it's different to have also um a lead or someone you know more senior looking at what you're doing and give you feedback and well, and then meeting face to face is a different type of network because you know people know you as a person, not just 
as an image on their computer. And when it comes time to, oh, do you know anyone who would be interested in this position? They can say, oh yeah, you'd like this person. Just, their work is really nice and they're a good person. So, cause you need both. No one wants to work with someone who's, you know, not considered nice or yeah, a good course. vibe. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Okay, so um, if you want to to share this with us, what are your main inspirations to be anything like music, video games, movies, or something else, some artists that you follow? Oh, I'm terrible with this because I, I never remember titles or names, but... Um, That's okay, <laughs> whatever you, you want to share. Um, so I follow a lot of artists on Instagram and it's a, a lot of different kinds of artists, uh, character designers, um, art directors and stuff like that. But I, the most, the, the type of artist that I follow most is usually, um, environment artists and background painters or background designers, because it really inspires me to, to, to reach their level, the way they play with colors, composition, uh, lighting. It's, it's great because you know, even though it's not, you're not doing anything with it, you're retaining that image in your head. So I, I love just right clicking and saving the image like, okay, I'm going to use this as an inspiration for color or for lighting or for composition or for, for storytelling, whatever. Uh, and then I love to read. So I love reading. And that also creates images in my head that then I can use like, oh, this is inspiring me to do a piece and I'll do it. And if it's good enough, it goes in my portfolio. If it doesn't, it's, you know, still good that I got it out and I practiced and it's not good. And then it will be good someday. Who knows? Cause I'll pick it up again and draw it again. I don't know. It's not, I don't have, yeah, it's a lot of things. It's not just the one static. That's a, that giraffe is a, is a, an idea thing. It's, and it's obvious why I didn't go into character design. <laughs> Um, no, don't don't say that. <laughs> it's it, it it could be worse, but it could be a lot better. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's my answer. But that's my inspiration. It's other artists and my own imagination when I'm reading. Okay. Now I am just curious about this. Do you listen to maybe audiobooks while you're working? I, I listen to podcasts. Oh, perfect. Okay. It's because uh, it happened to me. Yeah. You like. You know, I was listening to Harry Potter books, everything oh. while working. Yeah. But it was just coloring because if you have to design, it's way too complicated to have this voice inside your head. <laughs> you can't focus on two things. Yeah. I, I only listen to something that I have to pay attention ish if I if I'm automatic, if I don't have to make decisions. So I decided this is the color. I have to fill all this and, and just give it volume. Okay. I can just play and do it listen to murder mysteries while i while i'm painting a kid's show <laughs> amazing yeah and um do you uh, you know you have such a busy schedule but do you have time for personal projects maybe for personal pieces that you want to put in your portfolio if i organized myself better and decided not to have a personal life i would <laughs> but but because, you know, I still want to take care of myself and my mental health. And so I want to be with my friends and my family and rest um, and have other hobbies outside of art, because that's also important to keep you a well-rounded artist has to do a lot of stuff. Can't just focus on, you know, drawing well, because it will stagnate. Um, so I could, but I choose not to so when I'm really inspired maybe I'll do I'll sit down on the weekend and work on it if I don't have you know a lot of plans but uh yeah it's hard for me to work on um developing a personal project when I'm working on when I'm working full-time and part-time yeah, of course yeah <laughs> working working then working again <laughs> you know never, never resting no that's not a good option <laughs> Okay, I think we can get into the, you know, GC questions about portfolio and applying. Right on. That's... Let me just go turn the lights on. Yeah, okay, okay. Sun is setting. Okay. Hello. Okay, perfect. It must be 
warm where you are. In Italy, it's so cold these days. It's also snowing somewhere. Oh, gosh. Yes. Not in Rome, but I, yeah, I've seen pictures of snow. Yeah, today here. it was like 15 degrees. It's wow. nice. You know, it's almost spring. Almost spring, yeah. Okay, so any suggestions you would give to uh, students that wish to apply for uh, background artist positions? Could be painting, could be design, could be matte painting. Um, the good thing about um, background design is that if you have a lot of backgrounds, you can go into any of those positions. Um, but uh, the most important thing, so I have I, I, I have a couple of like important things that you guys should do regardless of where you want to go and then I'll specify um, background stuff because you always need to have they probably the other people who already spoke they probably already told you this but I'm just gonna you know make sure you know that it's important it, to have a good cover letter because that's your first impression after people see your work a good cover letter will show you who you are as a person um, contacts everywhere instagram if you publish on instagram twitter if you publish on twitter um deviant art uh what's the other one linkedin everywhere just have your contacts out there because people will want to contact you and not a lot of prank calls happen nowadays so you there's not a problem but if you want to create a specific work email that's also you know just your name and a little else that people can use it and memorize it to, to contact you. And then always personalize your portfolios to where you want to go. So if you want to do character design, don't have a lot of stuff and characters, have only characters and then have a separate, if it's online, have a separate link for the rest of, the, of your work. Um, if you want backgrounds, just same thing, only backgrounds. And then another link for props and um, character design or whatever. Um, yeah. And then, you know, have a good resume, have a good CV, make sure it's clean, but also a little artistic, like make, make it pretty. It doesn't, it can't be a Euro pass. People will throw it away immediately. Just have a pretty well-designed resume where, you know, if you're only, if you only have school for now, that's fine. Just put your, your school and your achievements. Like if you have any trophies or if you, uh, trophies, no, um, if you want any prizes in drawing, painting contacts and stuff like that, and any workshops, experience is, um, any experience is valid to put on your CV until you work. And then it starts, you know, you start prioritizing where you've been and what you've done goes further down. Um, when it comes to portfolios for background design um, or background art, You'll, you'll always start from the bottom, like background painting or um, uh, layout, and you can, you should have both. Even if you only want to paint, you should have a little bit of both. You should have a good layout. So whatever you do, you have the layout, and then you can do the the paint painted version next to it. So they, they know that you know how to organize and you plan your works before you go straight into painting. You won't see a lot of that in mine because I've started working and they still haven't approved my, they still haven't released the, my production work, so I can't share them. But yeah, so this is, this is what I've learned since I started working in the industry and this is important. I wish I knew sooner, specifically to backgrounds, of course. Oh yeah, and color keys. I know this isn't a color key, but it just reminded me. No, color okay, keys. But also thumbnails, of course, makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. So what else can I say? What did I, wait, what didn't I answer? I feel like I jumped something. No, 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 it's okay. Um, what, whatever you, you know, you want to share as suggestions, maybe, I don't know, things that happened to you, you had to wait on how to deal with, um, let's say failure. That means no one responding maybe for the first work. Oh, yes. Yeah. I know failure. I know people not answering back. Uh, know, it's not pretty to call it failure because it's not actually yeah, a failure. Yeah, we call it failure because we did succeed, but it's not a failure. It's just, you know. A step in the process. Um, I actually have a friend of mine. She's a She wants to work in storyboarding. 
and um, everywhere uses storyboard because so a background design is usually background art is usually for animation. Um, but storyboard is used in movies, in uh, TV series, in live action, in animation, in games, um, everywhere, um, also in advertising and stuff like that. And so if it's so it's not easy, it's never easy, but it's there's a lot of offer for storyboard artists because yeah. not a lot of people are um, good storyboard artists and she wants to work in it and. I saw that Disney was looking for um, a storyboard revisionist, which is like the base, the the first, the entry level um, position for storyboarding. And I I sent the link to her and I told her she you should apply. And she was like, Oh no, it's Disney. They're never gonna say yes. And it blew my mind. You're you're saying no to yourself. You didn't even give them the chance to tell you no. Like sure, it's probably harder for you because you're German and they're you know American. So to work for them is not easy but don't stop yourselves because you're 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 so sure you're gonna get a no because if i if i always stopped myself because i was sure i was gonna get a no i would have never sent a single cv because we're our harshest critics like no one's gonna hate our work more than us or more be more proud of our work than us we're both it's the you know dictom the dichotomy dichotomy of men we're both proud and terrified and and terrible towards ourselves and uh, yeah that's my the biggest suggestion i could do is like get the nose like aspire to get the nose because that means you're trying and sometimes people are nice Some, sometimes people will tell you will give you feedback so no but because of this and you'll work on that that's actually one of the no's that i got it was it's it's too messy it's not very structured and I was like okay so I can work on that I can work on cleaning my lines on being more less painterly because I want to work in a production so painterly is very nice when you're selling paintings but in a production you should really try to be more serious more you know strict yeah. with your lines more clean more clean yes <laughs> and you know uh, it's really a valuable experience since you applied to uh, Titmouse and that was your first job. So there is proof that you can apply for big studios and get a yes. Absolutely, 100%. And especially in, um, in, in these times where remote is so, it's, it's so, it's catching on, it's so popular. Like I was working for Canada, eight hour difference and they didn't care and I was, you know, so working for them, it was still a valid, it was a, I was working at Titmouse, even though I'd never visited the studios. And sometimes, you know, Disney might do the same. Don't be afraid. And I say Disney when I, when I could say DreamWorks and when I could say Sony and whoever, all the others. Of course. Yeah. What do you think about this? Um, you know, all these remote positions that we got because of course, because of the pandemic, um, Will there be um, possibilities in the future to, you know, keep working remote? So there are more possibilities maybe for from for European or also, also non-European people to work maybe for the United States or big studios in Canada and so on. Um, so that's try me trying to predict the future. It's going to be hard. Yeah, of course, I, I of course. Hope I hope it maintains where um, remote is very popular, but also a lot of, of a lot, well, uh, countries will sometimes give studios um, benefits or tax breaks if whoever they hire live in their country. That's something that happens in Ireland. So Animation Ireland, like uh, Lighthouse and Cartoon Saloon, all of those, they prefer to hire people who live in their country than um, people who live abroad. If you're good enough, doesn't matter where you live, people will hire you. Like there's a just as a, a level you reach that doesn't matter where you go, people will want you and they will tell you um, or maybe invite you to go there to work or accept that you're going to work remote. A lot of artists that I follow on Instagram, on, yeah, on Instagram, they're actually so good that they can work wherever they want from wherever they want. And that's even be before the pandemic. But now after, 
I hope that people that the studios will maintain these these conditions because it's also sometimes cheaper for them because you know in Portugal we do not get paid the same as Ireland or France or um, Switzerland so um, yeah they can offer us less and we'd be happy this is awful to say but it's a little bit true well okay they they also need money to produce <laughs> series or movies or whatever so it's an important part of these yeah. kind of decisions of course absolutely so makes sense mm. so um did you um need to get a visa to for canada for teeth mouse i it's it's a technical question i don't know how that works um so, but i'm really I, curious if i if i wanted to work there uh, physically i would have needed needed a visa and um canada has a softer process because i did look into it has a softer process of getting a work visa than the united states has um the only thing you need is a sponsor so it's a contract where your um employee says we're hiring this person from this time to this time this is their contract duration and you can apply use that to apply for a work visa and yeah pay pay whatever you have to pay and that, that's basically it Um, but because I was working remote, I needed no visa. Okay. I just needed, you know, to pass, to, to write the invoices and that was it. Okay, this yeah. is encouraging for, for, for everybody. I was really curious about this because it's not really easy to find this kind of information. Or maybe it is and I just, you know, couldn't find that. It, you really have to dig into the whole, like the, the government websites of the places where you're looking at. So it's a lot of work. And I just did it because I was, I didn't know it was a re remote position when I applied. They told me that afterwards. So I, I looked into it a lot. So I knew what to ask for and what to expect. And so, yeah, most countries are kind of easy to get a work visa. Um, the United States is not one of them. No, of course not. <laughs> I think it's really uh, pricey for studios to pay um, yeah. for job contracts and to, to bring people to the US to work there. Yeah. But never lie uh, when you're submit like um, when you're applying to a job, never lie, please. That's the, the fastest way to 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 get a bad rep. It won't ruin your reputa reputation, but it, it'll it'll leave a, a bad feeling if they if on the website they ask, will you need help with a visa? And you select no because you think it's going to be easier for them to look at your stuff. And then when they talk to you, you say, oh, but I will need help with the visa. That's not a good look. That was something a, a recruiter told me because I asked her um, and she used to work all, for all the big studios. She's now at like Blizzard, I think. But I met her. I met her at Annecy and uh, kept contact through LinkedIn. And I asked her, say, Dory, do you know? Is this? Should I say yes? Should I say no? How will I be seen the best? And she said, Never lie, never lie. It's not a good look. And it, yeah, recruiters do not enjoy that. Yeah, hmm. you you ask them to do like um, a lot of work, maybe if you just lie in your application and you're not tr you're seen and not trustworthy yeah of course makes Never. perfect sense yeah. so it looks like this year we are going to have uh Annecy as it was before the pandemic looks <laughs> like because we never know yeah. oh, it's such complicated times but <laughs> let's hope we will have the festival uh, any tips for people who I've never attended the festival, how to be prepared, how to talk with recruiters, maybe um, how to network efficiently. Okay. Um, yes. So have a printed portfolio. If you want to show people your work, like recruiters or your favorite artists or just people who work at other studios doing what you want to do, have it printed. I, take your iPad. It's also fine. But, you know, depending on, on how the light is or your battery, it's just easier to just have paper and people can flip through it and see. And, you know, if it's it's well designed, it's it's another it's another look, it's better taste. Take um, cards, you know, uh, calling cards. Okay, yeah. Business cards, that's it. Business, business cards. cards. 
yeah um with uh your contact information and sometimes people just will just leave the cards on random places and if they like the design of the card or if it has if it has like um a good painting or drawing on it people will like oh what else does this person do and take it and then look at it at home um when talking to artists they're absolutely to like to artists who are um more successful or work at places that you want to work at just be chill I did I wasn't chill before like I used to look at them like oh my gosh you're like famous to me and it's they didn't like that and I understand because they're normal people with a normal job I just happen to follow them on Twitter or something or Instagram and like what they do so be chill and always polite and humble don't don't try to be too cool people like nerds people like geeks they will enjoy if you if you're you know silly and a little bit shy but confident in what you do just humble like I do this and I love this drawing do you have any tips that I could make it better that I could take it to another level people don't mind being asked to 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 give feedback most of the times don't interrupt people when they're eating probably is no yeah of course <laughs> choose your moments um don't be afraid to talk to anybody recruiters um are expecting people to come up to them and ask questions and stuff like that so yeah don't be too shy and add everyone on linkedin everyone because that's where you're that's like your permanent cv and it's always getting updated and you, people will if people are looking for you they will find you like I need someone who knows really good Photoshop and knows, I don't know, Italian and English, and they will search those criteria and then your portfolio, will, your portfolio, your LinkedIn profile will show up and they're gonna be like, huh. So it's good to be known. Perfect. A lot of people. Will you be, will you be in Annecy this, this year or maybe some other events in Europe or abroad? I <laughs> Do you plan to go? Yeah, I, I was planning on going to Lightbox, but I think this year is still going to be remote. I'm not sure. Mm, I don't think so. I nope. mean, if the situation is not going to change, um, I think this, this year it will be, um, you know, on site. That's going to be, that would be an amazing, but I have to talk to my friends because I like to go in a group. Um, I'd love to go, actually. I've never been to the US before, so it's going to be an adventure, but I'd love to go. That Oh, you're gonna love it. So uh, actually, if if uh, if you guys want to know some of the best um, conventions, bat slash like places to to go, um, Annecy, you know, but also Lightbox, which is Bobby Chu's from Schoolism's uh, uh, expo. Uh, CTNX is not very well, not like broadly known for students and stuff like that but it's great within the animation industry um not games so trojan horse was a unicorn is more for games or used to be now now it's maybe more more film industry but it used to be more for games and ctnx was great for animation in general that was actually the first expo i went to and i met a lot of friends and did a lot of networking and that was great it's a little expensive, but you know, expensive to, to go there and stay there because the the, the expo is like one hundred and fifty dollars. And I see is more expensive than that. But so all of going and doing all that is it it's expensive in the end. But you really it's a good investment. It's literally an invest investment, and you you get a cool vacation out of it. Of course. Yeah. My now I want to go even more. Oh. It, I'm I going to buy tickets it. tonight. <laughs> do it. Uh, oh, and if, even if you go alone, because I always went alone, um, you do make friends there it's easily. Because there's a lot of people just going like you, like, you know, fresh out of school or um, they decide to change careers or they're from Europe and haven't have never worked in, in America or for an, anim or for an American studio. So you'll always meet someone like you and you'll always make friends. I, I've never seen anyone going and coming back alone. They always come back with friends. Okay. So don't be afraid of going alone. This is, is the point of this. 
be brave. Apply. Add everyone on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I took notes mentally yeah. of everything you said. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're so welcome. where can we see um, some of your work in the productions you're working for? If you want to share some titles, if some of them are out yet, or if some of them you can't share, it's okay. Uh, uh, Star Trek uh, season two, Star Trek Lower Decks season two um, is out, has been out for for a few months. It's actually done, finished, it's all out. So you can uh, watch it on Amazon. Okay. If, if it's in, if it's, uh, yeah, it's Amazon because it's another channel if back in America and Canada, but it's Amazon here in uh, Europe and <laughs> And Ardman, it's the project is called Lloyd of the Flies, but it's still in production. So we're still working on it because it's the first season. So you won't be able to see it for a while. Uh, yeah, until the, the end of the year, I think. It's not going to be out. Okay, but we have your contacts in a few slides, I mean. So we will keep following you, of course. And maybe we will see when the show is out. We will be yeah. able to, to watch it. I hope you do. Um, but, uh, Anyone here, anyone who sees this, like, feel free to 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 friend me, friend me. I don't even know if it's friend. Well, connect with me on LinkedIn, and if you have any other other questions or want me to, to look at your stuff or want me feedback on how you're organizing your portfolio, feel free to come contact me. I don't mind at all. Okay, I wish I know, I'm doing what I wish uh, was done to me before, so it's perfect. Oh, oh, and very important. An idea, the teachers, like they're literally some of the best professionals out there. Don't be afraid of continuing to ask them for feedback. Like a lot of times, even now, if I want, if I'm stuck on a, on a painting, I'll just, you know, DM Isabella or, or Cristiano and I'll just ask them, Hey, how do I fix this? And they'll, 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 they're so nice. They're so sweet. They'll just, you know, tell me or even paint over, draw over. Like all of them have, have been harassed by me <laughs> for help. That's so, true. Yeah. They're no, really, really good. Yeah. Don't discard your teachers here because they're, they're the best. They're awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if it's okay with you, I don't want to, you know, steal all of your time tonight. No, no. Yeah. But maybe we can uh, have some time for questions. If sure. the students yeah. following have some questions, you can just type them in the chat, guys. And we will ask Beatrice. OK, we are getting some questions. I can already see them. <laughs> also, you see uh, the links to, to follow Beatrice, right? In the presentation. So we can be stalkers after this call. I already am. <laughs> the good thing we're we're all stalking each other. We're yes. all each other's fans. It's the best. And it's amazing. Okay. First question uh, by Marta. Um, the first one is uh, with whom did you do the mentorship? Yeah, I was also curious. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, the name uh, of the artist? <laughs> Tiffany Meng. Okay. She she worked on um uh oh my gosh uh, that movie the life of Vincent or okay. so th that Vincent Van Gogh movie that was all animated in oil paintings yeah 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 she was one of the artists that worked there and um, if you go on her on her Instagram you'll see the way she works with light and um and shapes and it's oh, and colors it's just amazing it's great to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, she actually, uh, I, w I applied to a different studio um, at the same time as Ardman and they wanted to hire me and I was between the two because it was really like two amazing offers. And Tiffany was hired to do um, color keys for the, for the other studio. And we talked about it and she was, she was so proud of me. She was like, come, let's join, let's work together. It's going to be so cool. But um, I, I eventually decided by Ardman because it just it just made sense for me. But yeah, so this networking thing it's beautiful. Yeah. Maybe you will work together in the future, who knows? I hope so. 
would be amazing. Okay, mm -hmm. so second question mm -hmm. uh, by Tom. What makes a good cover letter? I always have a hard time writing about myself. I agree. <laughs> I um, I also know what you mean because I never knew what to add because people were very vague about what to what to insert into a cover letter. But so um, what what is important is to introduce yourself, say uh, what your name is, what position you're inter you're applying for. So don't have a cover letter for everything. Have for every position, have a different cover letter explaining why you want to work there and um, why you think you're qualified. And um, so that, and if you found this position online, check what they're looking for and copy and paste the type of artist they're looking for. So they're looking for someone who's creative and um, speaks well English and has a team you know, uh, team, it's mindful of their team, you know, whatever, and add that. So you're looking for this type of artist. And I, I feel like my qualifications and experience match that. And so if they're, I don't know how it works, because I'm not a recruiter, but if they're like going control F or command F and searching for keywords, you'll pop up. Um, also add uh, a paragraph or two about your uh, qualifications and your um, experience. So if you don't have any work experience, any like industry work experience, don't worry, just put whatever you worked on in school. So if you had, um, if you worked on a, a short film in school, describe how it was working for that or how, what you added to that uh, project. If it was just, um, you know, a big visual development project that you developed um, through the year, write about that. Um, you know, don't be afraid of polishing whatever you did. If, even if you don't think it was a lot, make it seem like it was. It's not lying if you're just proud of it. And um, and thirdly, um, describe why you want to work at the studio, like why the studio um, calls to you. Sometimes you're probably just applying because, you know, it's a job and you found it. Not everything is going to be DreamWorks or Disney, um, but it's still nice to, for example, what I do is I Google the mission statement of that, of whatever studio I'm working for. So, for example, if you Google Disney mission statement, it says to entertain, inform and inspire people around the world through the power of unparalleled storytelling. OK, pick that up you know, don't copy paste that, but choose the words that uh, that they that they chose and make a, a sentence about why that speaks to you, why that why that's important to you and why you want to why why you you'd want to join the studio because of that. And then, yeah, that's basically it. So to sum up, Introduction, um, say, if you know who the recruiter is, mention their name. If not, just say, you know, uh, hello or dear um, is a studio recruiter. My name is my name and I'm interested in applying to this position blah, 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 because of these qualifications that I have. This is my experience, short paragraph, my experience. Um, and this is uh, in short experience. And, and the studio, and I really want to work here because of this, these reasons. Thank you. Um, your name. Yeah. So make it polite. Don't make just as a short, uh, don't, a short paragraph is not a cover letter. So you want to have at least three or four. Um, yeah, that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry if I, if I made it extra long, but it was really one of the places where I suffered the most trying to find information for this like how to make a proper cover letter. And so since I found it, I'm like, OK, I'm an expert at cover letters. Let's go. This is really valuable, actually. I always thought, I don't know why, maybe I've heard it somewhere, that uh, for artists, for art position, they usually go, you know, your portfolio, then your CV. And after that, they, they have a look at your cover letter. That's if right. they are going, you know, uh, mm -hmm. forward with your application, but it's not the first thing that they have a look at, of course. 
Um, so it's more important to have a beautiful, beautiful portfolio, of course, yeah. but it makes sense to have a cover letter that states clearly why you want to work there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the portfolio is the most important thing because it's what you're going to, to do for the company. Um, but a lot of people are very, very good. Like talent is everywhere. But if you're not, if, if the personality doesn't match or if the vibe isn't there, people will not want to work with you. So the cover letter is that. So portfolio is what you do. CV is what you've done. And the cover letter is who you are. So you want to make sure you have that. Don't be too formal. In animation, no one is formal. You, you'll you see people working in their, you know, hoodies, in their um, onesies. I've, I've worked with people I've had meetings with people through Zoom or or uh, Skype and Meetups and Google Google Meets where they were wearing their onesie. So no formality there. Just be polite within that informality. Uh, this is why it's my dream job, going yeah. to work in my pajama. <laughs> no, I'm no just type here. <laughs> <laughs> and no one will judge me. No one will. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have some more questions, guys, if you just want to type them. Let's see. I know this is very, it's very daunting. You either have the question from before or you have to start, you know, trying to work for yourself and start applying by yourself to get the questions. Oh, but... <laughs> oh yeah, we have another one. So by Marta. Uh, what locations would you include in a background art portfolio? And is it good to have several styles? Yes, yes, it is. Nice question. That is a good question. So um, you, uh, I, I advise, uh, I advise you to have like a city location and then a nature location and then a room um, and uh, what do you call the 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 you know the three quarters look at a room, so it's not a compos so it's not a, a, a composed background, but it it's um, a mock up of a room because okay. that that's also very that's also good to have because they within backgrounds you can do a lot of stuff I I including visual development, so to have that wouldn't hurt, and then different styles because people want to know that your studios want to know that you're flexible, so you can have a very realistic a very cartoony, like exaggerated, nothing, nothing is the size it should be, um, a mix of both, something sometimes just black and white, something colorful. Uh, and then, you know, you can also try to have something digital and something not, uh, traditional just in there. That's not the most important thing, but it's nice th that people can see your range. Of course. What is a good amount of pieces to have in your portfolio? I know this is a tricky question. But what would you say it's enough to start applying and then one can build up the portfolio more? So my, ex my experience with recruiters and uh, stuff like that is um, between six and eight is a good amount. Okay. N not too few, not too many, because people will get tired. You're very proud of your work, but people just want to see, people just want to know your best works. Oh, and always only include your best works. Um, even if it's, if it makes for a smaller portfolio, it's better than if you put a bunch of, you know, fluff in there just to make it thicker, just your best and then organize it. This is usually common knowledge, but organize it with best first, second best last and third best in the middle. And then you can organize it by however you want. It's also nice. Sorry, my throat is getting dry. It's That's also okay. Dry. <laughs> it's also, sorry. I was trying to push through it, but it was really dry. No, 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 no. Of course. It's also nice if you have like a, a cohesive story uniting your portfolio, but it's not mandatory. But if you're looking like, if you're searching for inspiration and you have some ideas, you can have like a single thread uniting a story through your backgrounds or your paintings, whatever it is. Oh, also to show maybe some storytelling in the backgrounds. Oh, of course. I've yeah. seen it's really common. This mm -hmm. thing. Maybe you don't have characters, but there is always something going on. 
I can't read it. I'm sorry. I don't know why this isn't showing up for me. No, no, no it's okay. I can read it for you. Um, Marta is saying thank you uh, for these perfect tips. And Tom is asking, how, uh, sorry, uh, do you do much plein air painting or drawing from life? Could you include this in a background art portfolio? For sure. Yeah. Um, but it's, so this is more of a, a complementary aspect to your to your portfolio so it's not it's not it shouldn't be um first last or middle one it should be like in between and they should be incredible so if it's just sketches if it's a sketch that leads to a final um painting yes include next to the final painting either like next to it or in the page right right after or right before um, if it's just random sketches or um, plain air studies uh, and they're not connected to anything, make sure they're the best and then just put them in there somewhere where you think it would make sense. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Okay, perfect. Um, but it's good that you guys are, are, are doing studies and plein air um, paintings because oh, they're, they're the best they're the best things to keep developing your your style and um, your hand because yeah this is like this is like um, CrossFit you always have to keep training never stop never stopping and it's also you know refreshing maybe if you're working on a project and it becomes work even if it's your personal project then you can relax doing studies and life drawing it's a good way also to change things change things up a little bit sorry <laughs> yeah yeah keep it interesting absolutely yes so i think we answered uh, all the questions and um i'm really thankful for this time um that you spent with us i'm really really thankful well, i found the i found the the the, the conversation okay <laughs> sorry guys i was i was really Really weird that I wasn't being able to, to read what you were saying. There you no, are. no, it's it's okay. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any any other questions that you remember after um, today, feel free to reach out through LinkedIn or uh, Instagram, uh, and uh, you, you know, tell me how you know me in case in case you you have a weird name or something like that. <laughs> Because it happens sometimes that people were to just want to, you know, reach out because, I don't know, I work somewhere and it's, so it's good that I know where you're coming from. Um, yeah. So, yeah, never stop studying, do workshops. Um, it's a privilege to be an artist because, you know, it's easy to become a starving artist. So if you can do workshops and go to con conventions and stuff like that, you should. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you, I don't know what else to say. No, no, it's really good. And I really hope we will meet at some point, maybe at these conventions we were talking about earlier, since we are <laughs> pretty far away. Yeah. And also at the academy this, you know, in these years, uh, since it's remote, part of the courses, we have many students that are really far away. <laughs> so it would be great to meet at some point. Yeah. Oh, I hope uh, people from from Ardman are actually um, uh, planning on going to Annecy. So if it's still up, I might just go and meet everyone there. Yeah, so I'll nice. I'll be there. I'm planning to go, so it would be amazing. Maybe I will reach out and we do it. Can meet there. Yes. Also for anyone else uh, who is coming, let's meet there, guys. And thank you for being with us. Yay. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. I always wanted to 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 let people know what I know because it's it's some of these informations are really hard to come by. Like you really yeah. oh. so what else? I'll I'll give whatever I know. Definitely true. Yeah, we're doing this to to help people network during these times. Um it's a lot more difficult and but we have these meetings, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's such a good idea, guys. But, Rekale, was this your invention? 
Um, actually, yes. At some point last year, I was exactly. doing the master master level one, and Anthony Christoph, um, he said uh, you should have some kind of student association because uh, it could be helpful for everybody to create 100%. connections and share information also with students who studied at ID Academy before and now are professionals. Uh, and I thought, yeah, um, I studied at university and I really missed um, having this kind of, yeah, this kind of opportunities. So I thought, well, let's let's do it. If no one else is doing that, <laughs> I, I could do that <laughs> for everybody. Exactly. And it's been amazing. Um, we're making friends all around the world. We had uh, many other other uh, guests. Um, they shared some crazy good information. And, you know, uh, you would think um, it's always the same things that are shared uh, as suggestions and tips, but it's not like that. Everyone has a different story to tell or different suggestions, different experiences. So we learn a lot. Yeah, and your experience is also, all of your experiences are going to be different from mine, but uh, I hope they're, you, they're like successful and you love it because it's so yeah. cool when it, when it finally gets going, finally getting in there is the best feeling in the world. Like, oh, it worked all that time studying and bartending worked. <laughs> of course. So thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good night. And we'll see each other in the next meeting. Uh, Beatrice, if you if you want, you you can attend the next meetings. Um, just listening to maybe some of your past uh, mates in uh, in school. If you want, you're always invited. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Do you know who else who, who the next one is going to be? Actually, um, no, not yet, um, because it's a bit tricky to schedule all, all the meetings, of course, because you're all working. And so we do some little, maybe last minute confirmation. But I will, I will let you know. All right, awesome. I can't thank wait you to, guys. to hear them. Yeah. Everyone oh. is saying thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying, I'm, I'm reading it and I'm, I'm loving them. Uh, <laughs> have you talked to Dasil? Uh, no, not yet. You should. You should. She was the, like, uh, of my little group, she was one of the first to get a job uh, in uh, an animated production. And so, in, in all the way in Tenerife. And she hasn't stopped yet. So, I think you should talk to them, to her. Of course, I will. I will do this, uh, you know, next time. Like, ask the next, who the next one will be, and then I will <laughs> contact them. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. That's actually cool. I'm glad I, I inspired that idea. Yay. Should be, could be beautiful. Also, we could do in the future, we, we can interview um, some professionals who were not ID Academy students. Uh, Anthony is always saying this, guys, if you want uh, to um, organize a meeting with someone, we can reach out, just maybe, you know, uh, write to me and we will try to organize that could be really fun. Yeah, I'd love to join. I still have so many so many people to meet and get to know cuz yeah, I'm still I'm still, you know, very much a junior in in the industry. So yeah, I'm excited. Perfect. Okay. So, good night everyone. Uh, thank you Beatrice again. Oh, and we will see you out. next time. Okay. Bye guys. Bye guys. It was a pleasure to read your words and see your names. I hope to meet you guys soon. All right. Bye. Bye.